it's a real pleasure to be joined by Tony Fisher today. Tony is a very determined individual who has experienced a series of traumas and loss, which led to a quite an intensive period of depression, anxiety, and PTSD. Um, for his art, he's found something to sustain himself and develop coping mechanisms. Tony has become a passionate advocate for disability, mental health, and the arts, collaborating with many charities to, wear aware to raise awareness. Um, his work has appeared in many exhibitions and magazines, including Daily Telegraph, Country Life and Arts Council England. Um, he's produced film work for Channel 4 and appealed multiple times on terrestrial TV. Um, the way he uses photography as a therapeutic tool and to tell his life story is really fantastic and very kind of bold graphic imagery, which is always very imaginatively done. So to start with, Tony, um, great to have you with us today. Um, thank you for your time. Um, I see your kind of your personal story inseparable from your images you produce. Um, can you talk about your your life story and how photography has played kind of a, a major part as I, I've seen it in your work? Yeah, hi. Um, hi. Yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult to, um, you know, pigeonhole things that actually happened at certain times and all that. I mean, um, I mean, I've, I've been doing photography since, uh, I'll tell you when it started in a way, is uh, uh, when I was at school yeah. and uh, I was like rubbish at exams and stuff, but then it came somehow or other, I, I, I did sixth form and we had a separate block and, mm -hmm. and I set up a dark room, you know, there. Yeah. And I also used to um, go to art college evening classes and um, watch um, um, classic films and stuff. And then I, I used to go and show them at school. So I got emerging art very, around about 17. And so I've always been interested in, you know, painting art, photography, film and all that since mm. early days. But obviously I can't compress all my life story into a short piece here, but basically, um, if we fast forward to, you know, around about 1990 something, you know, and I was married, my wife got ill with motor neurone disease, etc. And, you know, lots of bad things happened and people died and my mum died and my dad died all, more or less the same time. And, you know, all that and it's taken and, and all the nasty things happened. I'm not going to talk about them all on the video, mm. uh, but basically I've, I've been doing um, uh, what they call expert patient. I'm, I'm helping train junior doctors mm. at the hospital on ways to approach mental health. But the thing is, it's, a very, it's very much of a process because um, uh, I can't put an exact date when I started doing images, but I think you've got the key image when, when I, uh, I did a self-portrait in the garden with all, all objects in the garden, like um, uh, uh, things, there's all clues there, like medication and, you know, all kinds of little things yeah. in that image. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so that was the first image, because I never even heard the term mental health before I was about 35 or something like that. Never heard of it, you know. Uh, but, you know, fast forward to the projects I'm doing now, which we'll talk about a bit later on. Part of the, the brief of that is actually self-exploration as well. It's not just about external things. It's about my journey. And I'm in a different, totally different space to what I was yeah. um, all those years ago now, yeah. particularly since, you know, uh, during lockdown, I, I met a lovely lady now mm. and... Uh, yeah. You know, we, we're creating, she's an artist and we're creating stuff together. She's doing some really interesting work, uh, reinterpreting some of my photographs by painting on them as well. So oh, there's wow. like kind of really interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's really difficult to sort of say in that on that date, I was so-and-so and that date, I was something else, you know? Yes, yes. No, it sounds, it sounds great. Yeah, yeah, and your work is very um, evocative and it's great that um, you found it's interesting collaborating with an artist and... Um, and on that process like painting over art is um fantastic isn't it it's kind of like um the japanese photographer raki i don't know if you've seen his work and he, he paints oh. over a lot of his um black and white images you know studies and and they're very very interesting really i, I think you know when art and photography comes together it's an interesting um process so, so you, you mentioned there um you're working with um junior doctors so well it's not with photography that's actually yeah. doing like you know um I was doing what before the lockdown because you know you had to go into the hospital and then you know talk to people and then yeah. then you got what you did you actually talked to them they went out of the room and then you, and you filled out a report on them how they presented themselves what they picked up on what they hadn't oh, picked okay. up on and then I always used to mention the vast importance of art yes which yeah. actually just bring me on to a very important thing that 
at Derby Hospitals, there's an organisation called Air Arts, and they're very proactive. Yes. And they do some fantastic work there. I've, I've got an exhibition on currently, which finishes in a, a couple of weeks' time, been on for a year at the hospital as part of a, a thing called Illuminate. Okay. Uh, but I, I've had stuff on there before because, um, you know, there's not many hospitals that have an active, proactive thing to do with art, and painting, yeah. photography, and they have live musicians going into the hospital. And it's very important mm. What, mm. what they're doing. And I'm really proud to have been part of that, you know, part of that process there. Yeah, um, so, yeah, it sounds like a fantastic scheme. And you say, yeah, yeah. and um, yeah, not enough um, hospitals or doctors um, have that approach. And I, I think art and photography are great therapeutic tools. They're, they're ways of um, making sense of the world. Um, they're, they're ways of being, you know, mindful. You know, I think photography is a great thing. I've done lots of workshops and it, it does make people more aware of the moment they're in and more mindful and, and and myself as a photographer I get totally lost in that zone I get totally lost when I'm thinking about a project when I'm when I'm out taking photographs I'm thinking is this going to work as a book a narrative um how does it all fit in but my my thoughts are nowhere else except for in that moment and there's um it's a great thing isn't it it's a great tool yeah. of photography I mean I also work with um like Nottingham City Arts they they've been very good and that they uh, do an annual show at the uh, again Institute of Mental Health. But it's a fantastic gallery space at Nottingham University, yes. and, and that's been really good there as well. But of course, when they break out of the ghetto, it's not you know we've got a label on it mental health. Everyone has got mental health. Yes, it's to get, get out into other streams, you know, not not just in, in that, and don't just to label it mental health. It's just part of the process. Yes, um, yes absolutely. Yeah. And as I say, it's evolving. That's what's interesting to me is that it's not, I don't want to be stuck doing the same thing over and over again. I'm trying mm. to find new ways of working mm. uh, with that kind of bedrock, if you like, to try mm. and, you know, move forward. Um, because I started off initially, actually, as a documentary photographer. I still love documentary in yes. black and white and stuff yes. like that. I did quite a few commissions in the past, you know, on D.H. Lawrence's Eastwood and uh, St Stilton Cheese is a real view and stuff oh, okay. like that. Oh, fantastic. You know. <laughs> but they, they went round, they went round all you know, that best of Nottingham and Derbyshire. And over the last few years, I've managed to break out of just in the local um, uh, counties and going, you know, further afield, London. I did a really nice one when, when I did a collaboration with another artist called Aidan Schindler. We went to Ennis Skilling in Ireland and did yeah. some work over there. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it, it's all um, grist to the mill, you know. Yeah. No, that's great. A lot of your projects seem very social. You seem to be having lots of conversations with different people, and um, and and collaboration seems quite important to you, which is is it's good. very important to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. I love I love working with Aidan. I love working with Fee. You yeah. know, and um, it's great. You know, um, and what's really exciting, I suppose, now is that well, anything can happen, can't it? Yes. We've had this terrible lockdown. We're still in it. Yeah, and so that I had to alter all the thing about my new project which i haven't talked about yet which yeah. tell me if it's appropriate to talk about it now yeah, or no, do it later. it'd be great to talk but, about it yeah yeah absolutely that's why i mean you know okay we'll, we'll miss out some bits in the middle and we'll go fast forward and yeah. about five years ago i did a two-year arts council project arts council funded project yeah and that was all about um mainly about windows reflections portals and all that kind of stuff oh, okay. and that, where all a lot of the stuff came from and yes. uh, in that process I actually won the National Rethink Mental Illness Pringle Art Award yes. for one of my images which that, that's written they and yes. see partners if you call them partners they really helped me boost me up like Rethink mm. they really helped me with getting that and they, okay. they, they uh, helped me reinvent myself in a way and, yes. and actually uh, promoted me to do an exhibition locally and then yep. the press picked up on it and I got I got tread on that you know yes yes and, and from that then i got this idea about because some of the themes are coming out in that about what is isolation you know mm, what mm. people work on and i've always worked it makes me laugh when people are about people having to work from home because of the pandemic i've always worked from home yeah always <laughs> sure, i've never sure. had an office mm, i've never yeah. you know i've done other things as well but i've never i've always worked from home yes yes and so yes. it's not not any different to me yeah you know yeah, I, I'm in a similar situation myself. Yeah, yeah. I, I think as a photographer, you do work from home, you work on location and... Um... Yeah. But, but from that Arts Council project, then we yeah. had this idea. And uh, again, I worked with other people to help put these applications together. And um, 
so round about um, April 2019, I started on this project, which is still going on until April 2022, called Only the Lonely Question Mark. And the idea is to identify people. And I was working all over the UK, all over England, actually, uh, when I started off, because um, uh, there's, there's no restraint as far as um, geography was concerned. Mm. It's got to be in England. It couldn't be in Scotland or Wales, unfortunately, but it's got to be in England. Yeah. And it doesn't matter, you know, what what age people are, where they come from, any, anything like that. And it was, it's really taken off. And then it all clamped down because of lockdown in March. Sure, year. sure. Mm. However, adapting that, yeah. I then went out photographing people. And a lot of people's done this. And, you know, they, they photograph people looking through a window and everything. But I thought, no, I want to take it a stage further. I want to have someone doing some kind of activity that makes mm. them happy mm. or give them some hope in the window. Yeah. So I've done a series of images on that. And um, two of those uh, are going, uh, they're being posted off this week to Barcelona. They're going in a show there, which has been put off three times. But that's, I, I was a runner-up in the Julian Marlott Cameron Awards. So, yes, you know, uh, representing women from a male perspective. But well, it actually ties in, they come from that project. Mm. So the, these things get taken up into other areas. Yes, and some of the things I plan to do, I, I was working a lot like in Bristol area, and all, I'm in Derbyshire now, I work yes. in Bristol a lot, and um, I went to a national conference on, on loneliness, uh, which is really good because mm. I had many different groups from young school children to, re, you know, really old people, you know, and it's yeah. fantastic. Um, but again, that, that thread got dropped because you can't do it with the pandemic. Sure, so sure. I found new ways of trying to do things, but What's good now is that um, I've done a lot of, if I'm rambling a bit, just tell me, but um, before the pandemic, we've done a lot of pre-work. I've got a, um, a project manager called Chris, and yes. we went up to Wakefield in Yorkshire, yes. to the place called the Art House, yes. uh, which uh, I was actually uh, an artist rep on the board for seven years there, so I, I know it well. But we went up there, trying to establish uh, a lot of the project up in, in Yorkshire and that got dropped and, and whatever but now it's been picked up again and so we are actually going to be doing quite a lot of work in in, in Yorkshire yes um, another thing I've been what's nice is people are contacting me rather than me going after them and I'm going to work a, a thing called the Calm Town project okay. which is in St Ives not in Cornwall in Cambridgeshire Yes. Um, and they've had a BBC documentary about wanting to go and take some portraits down there. Um, so all these things can be followed up on links, you know, but um, basically there are things in the pipeline, which as we open up a bit, I'll yes. better go and do, you see. It sounds fantastic. No, it's great. And, and like, again, I get that sense of, you know, like it's sometimes very easy to be insular as a photographer and to be working alone. It's, it's really important to have um, peers and people to collaborate with. Uh, and you know the whole, whole process of portraiture and photography is a collaborative thing for me and it sounds like it is for you you know you know that you know some people talk about this triangle where you've got them the subject the sitter and the camera you know and um for a, for a successful portrait to work um this has to be true and it sounds like you invest a lot of time with your sitters with your um subjects and you know you you, you seem to collaborate with them and um and that comes across in the images yeah, because thank you. Well, what's exciting for me is that I haven't really done that much portrait. You know, if you call them portrait, I haven't done yes. much. This oh, okay. Is, you know, part of the remit of this project is actually challenged me to go outside my comfort zone and start yes. doing things in a slightly different way. Um, because I've done like street, what they call it, they never used to be called street photography. Mm. I did a lot of stuff like that one time. And then I do, I think there's labels like landscape, but they can't, I'm really interested in nature, but you know, yes. from a different viewpoint. So it's mm. not just one thing. Yes. So, you know, I, I don't, when people say, oh, do you do that? You know, that, well, I do, but I do something else as well. Yeah. <laughs> but the portraits, I suppose, is a key element to what I'm doing right now. Yes. yes. Well, yes. not exclusively. So the exhibition at Derby Hospital right now has got no portraits in it. Um, it's okay. all kind of like things from lockdown walks, but done in a, in a, and it was the idea they wanted it to brighten people's lives that make them think at the same time, which was yes. a brief, you know. Yeah, but, fantastic. Um, yeah, I mean, um, there's been an exponential growth, I think you might call it, uh, you know, over the last couple of years with, you know, lots of competitions and people competitive against each other and wanting mm. to 
win prizes and all that. I'm not interested in that, really. I'm yes. not really, you know. It's yes. like, just want people to enjoy the work or, or, or get some kind of debate going about the work rather than, you know, it's, it's not like it used to be, you know. Yeah. yeah no, I mean, yeah. the very important thing I want to say is that the old grounding, if you like, in what I'm doing now goes way back to the 1970s when mm. I was fortunate enough to be a student at to, uh, Trent Polly with Paul Hill and Tom Cooper, you know, yes. actually doing, you know, actually working there and having a different philosophy on outlook on, on um, uh, photography. I worked with many, you know, tutors, you know, like Ray Moore and stuff yes. like fantastic yeah. stuff. And uh, and now I'm on approaching photography, you know, with Paul Hill. Yes, and it's yes, great to see other people's work and that. You know, it's fantastic. And I, I network as much as I possibly can with yeah. different people. Um, so I don't become stale, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's so important. And yet, oddly enough, I found that overall, the, 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 the most people who support me in getting the work out there aren't local. You know, the other you know, parts of the country rather than. Uh, I've got to be careful what I say because <laughs> I've got some certain views about certain organisations I don't want to say, but yes, um, yes. I find I've got a lot more support outside of the area that I live in rather than, mm. you know. The strange, I do, yeah, I, mean, I do, I live in, I must put context because I, I, you know, I live in a small village. Yes. And the village I live in, I was born in this village. Okay. And um, my parents lived here and everything and went, I went to live in Nottingham when everyone died and everything. I've ended up in a small sheltered accommodation flat. But, yeah. you know, that's another label. It's just a flat, you know, yes. to take the sheltered accommodation out. But yeah. uh, the thing is that I've got a car and there's a countryside here and I can get anywhere, you know, yeah. so it's, it's free. It's not, you know. Yes. Um, this is some kind of transformational thing happening, you know, because uh, I don't think in those... You've seen the film from 2016... Yes. I don't feel like that now. I don't, mm. you know, I don't feel or that really depressed about no. things. You know. Obviously, I feel anxious, but yes, you know, I don't feel depressed. That's great, isn't it? Do you think that's because of, like you were talking about photography and um, coming out of your comfort zone? Like, I guess photography is great at doing that. Like, I, I teach students, you know, street photography or street portraiture, and you know, one of the hardest things to do is to confront a, a stranger. E even after years, I find that quite hard. So. But yeah. I find photography, you're always, you're always growing. Your comfort zone, you know, maybe one day it gets so big where you won't be anxious or, you know, myself, you know, talking from personal experience as well. It's interesting. It really does push you and doesn't, and you don't notice it until years later and you think, oh, actually, I've grown quite a lot in confidence in what I'm doing. That's, um, do you think mm -hmm. photography's helped you that way? Oh, very much so. Yeah, it's funny that, you know, like... Uh... I used to go the old little walk and I, I've got a physical thing where I can't walk that far really, you yes. know, but uh, get out in the fresh air and we go out two or three times a week, yeah. me and feet, and we have a great time, you know, uh, just walking around little little ponds and bits of canal and bits of wood. Yeah. But when yeah. you're doing it on a regular basis and you start seeing more and more things, you know, it's mm. more and more images and things, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that's fantastic. It's like, you know, I mean, because you can't do it anywhere else. But again, it really makes you focus, if you pardon the pun, you know, because yeah. you start seeing things and connections and um, equivalents, if you like, you know, like... Yes, yes. Clowns are equivalent to a certain emotion or something like that. So, yes. you know, but because you're doing it regularly, you start to see, you get more and more absorbed, absorbed with it. So I was ever watching, yeah. you know, I, I don't, you know, but... Uh, um, I do tend to ramble a bit. So I'm no, no, that's good. I, I think they're great points. And um, and photography, you know, almost gives you an excuse to be more observant and um, be less passive. And I think, and like you say, it's, you know, it's a time-based medium. And it's interesting when, you know, like sometimes I do the same walk, you know, day after day and things do change, you know, nature's transient seasons and... Um, oh yeah, and the light as well, you know. Light. And the light. And it's that, that kind of heightened sense of observation and... Um, it makes me think of the work of Jen Southern, um, landscape yes. photographer, um, the painter's pool. You know, he, he talks about revisiting the same site year after year after year. And, you know, it's identical. But and you do notice the small changes. In, in his case, it was, you know, documenting the painter, which used to paint the same pool for 30 years, you know, like. Oh, wow. Small, yeah. So he, he's talking about the, the painter left behind the easel and there's like traces the painter is quite obsessive so he had bits of string 
on the branches he used to pull them back so they weren't out, out of his view um so yeah going back to the same place you see something different every single time so seasons light um it could be a number of things it could be you know a, a wildlife or maybe you observe and experience the environment different because you see somebody else there there's so many yeah. things i think and you're in that heightened state and you're going out to photograph it's a wonderful thing but um and, and something i'm doing uh, that you know the face of it doesn't sound that interesting but to me it's, it is really actually because um when i met Fee, she's a painter and then yes. I, I, some of the things things she's doing really you know got to me inspired me mm. and so what i'm doing at the moment because they aren't on that acrylic and they're fairly waterproof yeah actually <laughs> so i'm taking out the paintings and reinterpreting them in the landscape oh, so right, there's right. one like as a take on Ophelia, so i put it in you know actually sunk it in a pond full of water with all debris around it yeah. and stuff like that so i'm reinterpreting a, a work you know but it comes a different piece that's of interesting work. yeah it becomes deep as work um, yeah absolutely also something I'm doing that uh, it's reminding me I've got to do the next instalment. I, I really love doing Mad Covid Diaries, which is a blog. Oh, okay. Mad okay. Covid. And so I put pictures on there and they had a spin-off thing, a Mad Covid art project where, where you did an image or whatever you wanted to do. They sent you a lovely wooden box in the post nice. and you put an image in for someone to have and mm -hmm. want to keep in the box. And they did done something on the outside of the box mm -hmm. and that's going all around the country, different artists. So that's a kind of collaboration. Yeah, that's fantastic, so that's, isn't it? That's really nice thing I, I don't know where it's come from this but i really really love you know like sharing things and people sharing things with me rather than that being all precious and snotty nose about things you know i mean that's, i think that's very evident you know even talking to you today that yeah you're very open to different ideas and different ways of working and collaborating with people and i think that open-mindedness is um is much needed in the art world and i think I'm oh absolutely yeah there's a lot no. of yeah well we'll you know i'm not going to get negative <laughs> yeah i mean but, I, also, I mean, my influences aren't, uh, are, yeah, definitely, obviously, photography. And I've got, yes. bloody hell, I've got dozens of photography books and magazines, yes. a complete collection of camera work, and you name it. But, Fantastic. you know, and I soak all that stuff in. But when someone says, oh, that looks like a Martin Parr, I said, no, it looks like a Tony Fisher, because <laughs> I actually took that before he took something like that. Sure, you know, sure. it's not, not like, you know, I won't have this derivative stuff like it looks like so-and-so, you know, I mean, anyway. Because we all soak in influences, don't we? Yes. from all over the place yes. all the time it goes in here absolutely you know, over the years everything goes in here whatever it, whether it's crap stuff on tv or really good art you know it all goes in there and yeah. what comes yeah. out is what uh, somehow what you reinterpret what yeah. thousands yeah. of other artists have done or people you know because it comes out doesn't it we're yes. not all yeah. we are unique we, we all soak in stuff so if that makes sense and i think yeah. You know, uh, they've got lots of images and, 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 and that, you know, of photographers in me. And they also have been fortunate to go quite around the world quite a bit and go to loads and loads of art galleries and see, you know, uh, favourite stuff like um, Matisse and stuff like that and, and uh, Chagall and all, all that. So, you know, there's all a lot of art stuff coming into me as well as photography and yeah. film, avant-garde film. You know, I used to be a filmmaker. I was on the Arts Council. Okay. filmmakers on tour scheme before yeah. i made tv films that you know so experimental films are really important part of my background as well yes yes so there's, there's all sometimes though it's a bit overwhelming but it's like mm. a huge cauldron where you're throwing in making a huge soup you're throwing everything yeah. in yeah. but somehow yeah. it gets boiled down and it mm. comes into your head and it comes out does that make sense yeah it does make sense I mean, and that's the interest I don't, think isn't you it? Put, I don't think you can put that on a cv it won't make any sense <laughs> <laughs> It's interesting but, how all those things come together, I guess. So, so what's the starting point for you for a project? How do you make lots of work and then you, do you see like patterns subconsciously or do you well, go I think I see, I see patterns from the archives, you know, mm. when I go, go through stuff. And uh, I've got quite a few requests for me to, to actually, you know, go through my archives and produce booklets or to do, or, or you know, and it, it's so time consuming. I, I don't want to be stuck in the house scanning yeah. negatives for Absolutely, 50 years. Yeah. You know? yeah <laughs> and that, that actually it's like with the project only lonely you know you may think well you do one exhibition and that's it yeah but i'm actually trying to do several ex different exhibitions you yes, know it's evolving yeah. all the time so i don't want to have all the same stuff yeah um you know like back in um uh early december i put up a show that took a lot of putting up and nobody saw it because mm. it was locked down nobody mm. could go and see it but that's going to go up again, but I, I'm already bored. Not bored is the wrong word, but yes. 
you, don't, you always want to do the next thing rather than just looking back on something you've done, you know, because absolutely, you know, I want to be creating new work all the time, not just, oh, I've done it and that's it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've been told that I, I've more than exceeded my arts council brief, you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> project. So I, I never end up making any money because it all goes back in the pot to keep creating more art, you know. Sure, sure. So, um, but I, I do like the medium of actually putting things on walls and not necessarily just art galleries, but mm -hmm. on the walls because all this online stuff is fine, but I don't, it's not my cup of tea really online. Totally, you know. It does, yeah, it does transform, doesn't it? When you've got uh, like a, a physical print or a book and then in talk to, you, you yeah, start and you talk can... about the sequence and the ordering and, and how images look together. And I think, you know, how they produce the narrative or maybe how it jars somebody. And that's a, a great process, isn't it? That's a really fascinating process. Well, that's that, that's I've lacked around here. Um, and for some years, it's like there's been places where you could actually go meet other photographers or artists and actually have these debates and workshops helping each other rather than it's all structured. I have to do through Eventbrite at 50 quid a time, you know, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. go and meet people without yes. oh, that loads of money, without going through a third party institution that you just do it, you know. Yes, yes. I mean, there was a great experiment in the 1990s called Focal Point in Nottingham where, where yeah. that was going for a few years. And it's all now about other institutions taking over the space that the artists want themselves and that's that really mm. I swear, really annoys me because yeah. there's a lot, lot more kind of like organic mm. you know constructions of people meeting up and doing things without any money changing hands or any kind of having to go through hoops to get to do it you know yes yeah and of course with the pandemic that's really difficult as well of course it is tricky isn't it yeah but I, i've noticed there's a lot a lot more people seem to be more open to talk I, i've done lots oh, good, of yeah, good, uh, and yeah. then it seems to be they, they, I'm, not, I'm not sure why that people are more approachable and maybe they've got more time on their hands and maybe they've got less constraints in life I'm not sure but that does seem to be a positive thing they are they're kind of open to talk and open to help more than they ever were before <laughs> so um that, that seems to be maybe a positive thing coming out of lockdown you know somebody said I mean uh, this project officially finishes on the uh, on April 2022 Yes. But as someone pointed out to me the other day, uh, a curator said, well, you could actually run this for years more because yes. it's an evolving thing. There's no reason mm. um, you can't try and get some more funding and carry on doing it. Yet somebody else said to me, said, well, you typecast now as a, as a photographer does isolation. So I'm not, mm. you know, I'm not typecast. It's a yeah. bit like getting the role of Doctor Who, isn't it? And then you can't do any other acting because you, you know this Doctor Who. I yeah, mean, yeah, it's yeah, ridiculous, yeah. isn't it? You know, because what you said earlier is very true that, you know, it's uh, always been part of you, particularly over the last 40 years, 30, 40 years or something. Yeah. So I can't just discard all that kind of, and and because I'm actually past pension age, I'm not going to start, oh, I'm now going to become an architecture photographer, you know, sure, sure. do nothing else. I mean, you know, no, I don't see anything wrong in what I'm doing at all, really. Well, I think it's important to follow your passion, otherwise things become very boring very quickly and... Um... It's got to be something that fulfills you, and obviously, what fulfills you is kind of helping and collaborating with other people, and that process, and that process of reinvention as well, isn't it? I think. Um, I mean, I've, I've even been asked, and I've done a few. I must admit, I've done a couple of weddings, but my weddings have not been, you know, quite the normal weddings, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but if you've seen any of, have you seen that one? You know, like when uh, they give out machine guns to all the bridesmaids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, I mean, it's like you're not quite, you know, toy machine guns. I mean, sure. I mean, I mean. That little bit of edges. <laughs> but, uh, no, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna. Count. I want to have fun as well. You know why yes. not? You know, yes. It's not just about. Oh, it's serious. It is serious, but it's it's sincere. But it's not serious in the fact that you know I'm trying to impress anybody. I just want sure. to. You know. It's and, important uh, to have fun, but yeah, absolutely. I just love looking at other people's work as well. You know, mm. I've got some really talented friends. You know. As yes. Well. Yes. And. Um, and they got it together to bring books out and everyone keeps saying why don't you bring books out and mm. I, I just i'm going to have to try and do that at some point you know i think it'd be interesting way of um collating some of your work yeah i i can see your some of your work working in the book format and um and i guess there's a you know it's a bigger audience in some ways because um anybody can buy a book rather than some yeah. people i guess might find the exhibition space as a barrier if you've never been to an exhibition before exactly be, i mean yeah. i've just yeah. been recommended someone but I, I, i'm part of red eye thing in manchester yes. 
Uh, I did a work, not a work, uh, Zoom call the other day, and they, they sent me some links. Someone might be interested in doing some work in books, you know. Fantastic. But um, I've only got so much energy, you know, to, and, and I'm out there doing things all the time. It means sitting in and doing things, and I, I will do it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not quite sure yet. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> now, now we open it into spring, you know, we've been, you know, we're getting better weather and everything, you know. It's wonderful, I don't I was thinking, in, yeah. Don't sit on the computer like, you know, hours on end trying to design a book at the moment absolutely you know? yeah yeah sure but uh yeah fantastic yeah so um i mean i've got an exhibition now which uh at the matlock bath yes mining yeah. museum and pavilion you know which yeah. is really good and that that's going to have a lot of uh, i'm going to do a lecture there actually okay and then we've got i mean they are local at the minute the next one's going to be after that is um Number 28 gallery in the brand new library in Belper in September.